the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. A word of faith is nigh thee even in thy mouth. The word of faith is nigh thee even in even in thy mouth. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Good morning, and on behalf of your family and friends here at United Baptist Church, we welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. Thank you so much for tuning in to the radio station or pulling us up on our website and watching right now. Oh my goodness. Couple of real quick, I know a couple of announcements that we want to hit off right off the bat here. Here at United Baptist Church in Topsom, we are going to have a revival meeting uh, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's a Friday, Saturday nights, and Sunday morning and evening services. Oh, if you can mark those off on your calendars to be here, we would love to have you come and enjoy the, the services. That's October 6th. 7th and 8th. They'll be, the service themselves will be at 7 o'clock in the evening on Friday and Saturday and a regular service time on Sunday. And also, if you would like to join us out of China Lake, there is a concert from uh, featuring uh, Mark Schultz, the contemporary Christian songwriter and singer. He's going to be up there on the 14th of October uh, give it a benefit concert or the China Lake camp up there. Oh, we would love to have you come and enjoy, Mark. Uh, you can go online uh, for that one to get tickets. Uh, and then the tickets are only 20 bucks a piece. So uh, go online, markschultzmusic.com, uh, and you can uh, uh, pull up that uh, website there and get your tickets in advance. Uh, I think they're like $25 going to be on the day of the, the concert. So. Uh, save a couple bucks and go online and buy those tickets for Mark Schultz, October the 14th of the China Lake. Our joke of the day this morning comes to us in this way. The teacher asks the new student, did your father help you with your homework last night? The student being with pride and says, no, he was able to do it all by himself.
is when all of those, after that program, all of those secondary reasons then came into play. But even though they had the courses that our son wanted to take, we came from that area, and I myself had graduated from Friends University. Our son had never really visited the campus. You know, he'd been there, sure, from time to time, and, uh, uh, but it was always for a different reason. And when that's the case, we, you know, we sometimes don't pay close attention to our surroundings. And, but it means something so much different when you're there because of something that you want to do. So our son took advantage of one of those days and uh, uh, one of those excused absences from school, and uh, we went down to Friends University for a visit. Friends, like most colleges, do a great job. And when it comes to introducing themselves to prospective students, right? Even helping them to enroll, to help the new folks to, to come in and, and feel comfortable with the school. Our son had contacted them and told them the day that we were looking at coming. And a couple of weeks prior to that, uh, they had sent him a confirmation letter with all the directions and, and where to park and, and what to do. Someone from the registrar's office called to confirm just a couple of days in advance and to see if our son had any questions. And then when we were, were arrived, we walked into the administration office and we were welcomed by a young man by the name of Brian. As we quickly discovered, Brian was there to give us a personalized tour of the campus and the facilities. But Brian didn't work for the college. He did not work for the administration office, no. Brian was actually a senior student in the zoo science program, the same program that our son wanted to, to study. That was no coincidence. <laughs> it was evident from our initial instructions and introductions that Brian was extremely excited about the zoo science program. His eyes would just light up as he would tell about certain aspects of the program. And he couldn't wait to get us into the science building to show us where our son would be studying. And he really was excited as he told of the partnership that friends had with uh, the uh, zoo that was located right there in Wichita and how much that the zoo science uh, course studies, those students that were taking the course, how much that they were actually able to go and be there at the zoo and help. There were others there that particular day that were uh, looking at and visiting friends, but our son was the only one that was looking at the zoo science program. On one of our breaks, as we were visiting with some of the other folks that were there, some of the other student leaders, uh, as we were talking with them about general stuff about the school, uh, they were showing other high school students around and, and in their particular fields of study, but each and every one of those others that uh, were showing other high school students around commented that Brian has always been excited about the zoo science program and what it meant for him. Now I am certain that all of us have met a Brian before, someone that just overflows with excitement. Your experience probably wasn't about a college or a particular program, field of study, but whatever the topic was, you could just tell that that person loved what they were doing. We'll talk about a little bit more about that here in just a moment. But first, our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 10. In fact, it's starting and ending with the verse 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And we read together, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this day that you have blessed us with, and I thank you for your presence with us each and every moment of this day. 
God, I just pray here and now that you would speak to our hearts, to our minds, to our very souls with your message that you'd have for us today. That we could listen and understand and apply the things that you have for us. Oh, it may not come to us right here and now or even this day, next week or next month, but at the appropriate time as you have designated, your message will come through for us. And that is our prayer, Lord. That whatever it is that you have for us today, that we would recognize it. And we thank you for it, Lord. Father, I come to you now, and I just ask that you would take the words of my mouth, and that you would take the meditations of all of our hearts, and that you would make them acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. For the past few weeks now, we have been looking at the ten characteristics of a healthy church. And this particular week, we are on characteristic number seven. Characteristic number seven, as, as uh, defined in that book that we was talking about, Becoming a Healthy Church by Stephen Machia, Number seven is an outward focus. And the book, quoting from the book, it tells us, the healthy church places high priority on communicating the truth of Jesus and demonstrating his love to those outside the faith. Believe it or not, <laughs> we are not here just to fill a space for a period of time on a Sunday morning or, or whenever it is you're listening on the radio or, or watching here on the website, there is more to it. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying, all right? I did not say that corporate worship wasn't important. In fact, the Bible gives us several benefits of being able to meet together. And what I am saying is, is that there is more than just that corporate time together. We read that portion of the Gospel of Luke just a moment ago. The scripture that states, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that was lost. Jesus came. Jesus came to seek those who did not have a personal relationship with God and to provide for them a way that they could come to know him. And I think we all agree here this morning that Jesus is our example. He came to earth and one of the things that he did while he was here on this earth was provide us that perfect example of how to live our lives. So we, too, need to do those things that Jesus did, and one of those things is to be actively seeking those that have not yet decided to make Jesus their Lord and Savior. He is the only way to get to know God. Jesus himself said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And to accept him as your Lord and Savior, you become one of his children. You become what we call here in today's, and, and for several decades now, you become a Christian. The definition of a Christian is a follower of Christ. And I heard it once, there was a phrase that was coined here a while back. As we view those folks around us, and the phrase comes out as, there aren't any non-Christians. There are just Christians and pre-Christians. <laughs> so the question then is, how do we go about interacting and talking with a pre-Christian? Christian. First, we need to get out from behind the four walls of our church. We must be intentional at reaching out. 
Okay? It's widely accepted, and, and there has been studies that have made that indicate that within five years of becoming a Christian, a follower of Christ, all of the folks that these new believers hang around with are fellow Christians. In other words, we tend to sequester ourselves from the very people that we should be reaching out to. How are they going to see the difference that Jesus has made in our lives if they never see us anymore? So we need to be intentional with reaching out. We also need to have the right attitude as we reach out to others. For, for so many years, and, and I've heard it said more and more of, of Christians, about they talk about happiness and joy, but you sure couldn't tell it by the way they act. <laughs> no, not drab and boring as we reach out. We need to be like Brian, my example at the college. We need to, to be, to have that obvious joy that overflows to everyone that comes in contact with us. Brian not only showed his joy to us, but all of the other students there, too, knew the joy that Brian had. Oh, my goodness. We, too, need to be excited to share with others about Jesus. We, too, need to be excited to share with others about Jesus and what he has done. For us. Have we ever felt afraid, weak, or even scared to talk about Jesus with other folks? I love what the prophet Nehemiah back in the Old Testament had to say. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. A very familiar verse with a lot of folks. And maybe you'll recognize it also. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And I, I think the order in which the words come together there in Nehemiah's statement are very important because they are the way they are arranged tell us something. First of all, did you notice? That it is not our joy that we are pulling from. All right? It is the joy of the Lord. Our joy comes directly from God. It does not come from outside sources. It, does, it is not dependent on circumstances or situation. It does not even stem from how we happen to be feeling at any particular point in time. It comes from God himself. And in all other sources will eventually leave us feeling empty or even worse, discouraged and depressed. Our joy must come from God. And we have all heard the difference between happiness and joy, right? Joy is from the, the core of our being. We can have joy in and amongst the worst of situations. Happiness, on the other hand, is dependent upon the circumstances of the situation. If things are going our way, we're happy. When, when things are, are doing the way they should be, they're happy. But as soon as things go south, as soon as things go awry, our happiness goes away also. But joy, joy is with us no matter the circumstances and situations because it is not dependent upon those items. It comes from God the Father himself. Oh, my goodness. They, any other source will leave us discouraged and depressed. In the press. And believe me, as we are reaching out to someone else, nobody wants to follow a negative belly. <laughs> okay? They, who would want to 
follow someone that is a negative Nelly. I, I can't think of anyone. And then the second part of the verse is talking about us. Our joy is of the Lord, all right? But the joy of the Lord is your strength. It is my strength. It is to our benefit. We are strengthened physically, emotionally, and spiritually as a result of that joy. We can feel the difference. Oh my goodness. And it shows <laughs> in everything we do. Oh my goodness, everything we do. Because this strength is not limited to just our human needs. It is for every part of our entire being. If we want to make a difference in others' lives, we need to show them the source of our joy. And that source is Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. Have we been tired? Have we been feeling run down? Do the circumstances and situation of the world leave us with our minds whirling in all kinds of directions? Does the chaos that surrounds us these days take a toll on how we're feeling? Maybe. And I would even project that not maybe, but certainly we are looking to the wrong source for our strength. We may be looking inside of us. That's what society tells us. To look inside of you. Within you, you have everything that you need. You don't need anything or anyone else. Just look inside. And as we look inside, anytime, I wonder, how in the world is this going to happen? <laughs> what we need to be doing, we need to look for our joy, our strength the Lord. And through his joy, we will have the strength that overflows to everyone around us. It overflows to those that see. And they will notice. They will notice. With the joy of the Lord and all of the strength that he gives us, we can, just like Jesus did, intentionally and purposefully reach out to others with that joy. And when they ask, what is the source of your joy? We tell them, beyond a shadow of a doubt, our joy is in the Lord. It is my strength. Jesus reached out for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. We go out and we introduce these folks to someone that has made a difference in our lives as Jesus Christ. And that he wants to do the same thing that he has done for us, for them. They can have the same joy that we have. And it's contagious. Continue the work. As we looked at characteristic number seven in becoming a healthy church, an outward, outward focus. The healthy church places a high priority on communicating the truth of Jesus and demonstrating his love to those outside of me. Let us pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for the joy that you have for each and every one of us. And it is a joy that is a bottomless cup, fully replenishable. We will never, ever go dry of joy when you are been supplying of it. Thank you, Father, for the joy that you give and the strength that we can have through that joy. Father, help us as we look around to those people around us. Give us the words to say. Give us the opportunity to say them. And Father, may our focus of our speaking and our lives 
be on you. May those around us not see us, but may they see you. May they not hear us, but may they hear you. May they not witness us, but may they witness you. For you are our all in all. Thank you, Father. And as we come together this day, we would like to close with the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray in unison. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.